Good evening. I'd like to call a meeting to order. This is the April 27th, 2022 meeting of the Lowell Conservation Commission. We're starting with continued business. First, we have a certificate of compliance request from Mass Electric, DEP file number 2060783. The location is 53 Perry Street. Uh, they did a large amount of uh, uh, demolition out there and uh, needed to stabilize the area. Um, I don't know if any of the commission has been out there, but some of the staff did go and sent us pictures, if you recall. And um, is there anyone uh, joining us tonight from, from Mass Electric? Is there anyone on Zoom at all? Can you hear me? Hello? I can hear, I can hear somebody. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, um, my name is Laura McDonald. I'm with the Conoco Engineers and Scientists. I'm representing Mass Electric. Hello, good evening. Um, good evening. I, I did see the pictures and certainly it was a huge project and uh, uh, very challenging to stabilize that steep slope. Uh, I was impressed with some of the, the stabilization out there, but I did have one concern about uh, I'm presuming that some of the uh, the plants that were seemed to be flagged were were things that that Mass Electric had put in uh, to stabilize the slope, and uh, some of them were a little bit on the on the small side from the looks of things, and I'm just a little concerned about them uh, surviving uh, snow load and things like that uh, over the winter. We do, however, require uh, you know, usually a, a one or two year survival rate for uh, restoration projects such as that. So I just uh, wanted you to uh, be aware that we would be expecting that, that those things would either survive or be replaced uh, next time we go out, which probably would be next spring, I'm thinking. Um, did anyone in the commission have concerns about uh, about anything on, on there. Um, I, I, tell me about the, uh, there were some plantings that seemed to be uh, surrounded by barrels or uh, some kind of uh, container. Is that a permanent thing? And is it open on the bottom? That's what I was wondering about as well. Yes, so the barrels are open on the bottom and um, the plantings were installed in barrels within the riprap in order to um, make the area less um, likely to be used by um, people in the area to camp and whatnot. So um, that was the reasoning for use of the barrels. That way the uh, plants as they're growing will be able to spread out and, um, so and um, a grow the extend the roots down to the water line. So there is soil in between the riprap that uh, a plant could grab onto if they were spreading? Correct. Is that the case? Hmm. Correct. Okay. So they're well. not really barrels, they're kind of like corrugated metal, uh, corrugated um, high density polyethylene pipe, something you uh, would use in a, right. in a drainage so, system. They look pretty sturdy. Yeah. And I can see that that was uh, very likely a good idea given the steepness of that slope to keep, uh, keep things a little bit uh, stabilized. Um, so uh, those were my only questions. Uh, is there anyone from the public that would like to uh, express some concerns about this project? If not, I'd entertain a motion to uh, issue the certificate uh, with the understanding that uh, we expect a survival rate of uh, one to two years or replacement of, of things that don't make it for that amount of time. That I'll make a motion years. to issue the certificate of compliance. A motion made, is there a second? I'll second that motion. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Passes and the certificate Aye. will be going out. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. You have a good evening. Good evening. Next on our agenda, we have an emergency certificate that was issued, uh, I don't have, uh, March 24th. Uh, and it allowed uh, Wachusett Wildlife to uh, breach uh, in part a beaver dam at Monarch Street. Uh, this is a perennial beaver area and uh, we certainly don't want to uh, uh, discourage them completely but uh, it does overflow the road at certain times. So we're looking for a ratification of this emergency certificate. I'll make Hello. that motion. Okay, motion made to ratify the certificate, seconded by? I'll second it. Seconded by Perry. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, motion passes. Uh, the next item on our agenda is, uh, is a project uh, with DEP file number 2060813 at 87 Lafayette Street. Uh, this is on the agenda just because it's continued, but the applicant asked it to be continued to May 11th uh, instead of tonight. So that will not be heard tonight and it will be heard at our next meeting on May 11. At least that's what I understand, unless there's been a change. Moving on, we have a notice of intent uh, uh, presented by uh, Ian Ainsley, Meisner Brem Corporation, DEP file number 2060815. The location is 7 Avalon Street. And this is a uh, proposal to construct an addition to their home uh, within the 100 year floodplain and uh, 100 feet of Clay Pit Brook. Welcome. Hello, how are you? Uh, my name is Ian Ainsley. I'm an engineer from uh, Meister Brem Corporation, and I am here tonight with the applicant, um, Donna Martin and Nicole. Um, so just to get... Uh, just to get into the project, so this is an existing single-family house. Um, it is situated near Clay Pit Brook, which is a perennial stream. Um, the house right now is about 77 feet from the stream. They want to add a addition, and that addition would be on piers because the addition would be located in um, floodplain, bordering land subject to flooding. So they're adding, I believe, a 13 by 24 foot addition. It's gonna be on piers, um, and they're also expanding the deck. There's an existing raised deck in the back of the house. Um, there are adding six by 12 feet to that deck, and that deck is also um, raised above the floodplain, and will also be on piers. Um, I do show on the plan that we're gonna be adding some erosion control, I believe a um, tubing, filter stock tubing for any of the work so that nothing washes off into um, Clay Pit Brook. The addition closest point will be about 66 feet from that brook, and like I said, the existing house is about 77 now. Um, by constructing the addition on piers, the filling in the floodplain will essentially be non-existent. Um, it's very close to the upper boundary of that floodplain anyway. I believe the elevation is um, 98, and I think the furthest pier away would be built at like 97.5 or something like that. And these piers are you know, typically six to eight inch diameter, so they're relatively small piers. Um, and I think there are a total of three for the house and three for the deck that would be in that floodplain area. Um, so the amount of filling is, I think I had calculated is actually less than one, one cubic foot. Um, so it's pretty much non-existent. And below that addition, um, there will be kind of an open space, so there'll be no obstruction of um, like storm water or anything running off through there. Um, yeah, I mean, that's really the gist of it. So I'm happy to, to take any questions. Uh, did you say six or 16 feet for the piers? 
The six inches, I mean. Uh, six inch diameter. Six inch? Yep. Six to eight inch. I'm not quite sure which it will be. Okay, That's we typical. normally, uh, I think, would, would have that uh, on, our, on our plan, what you were proposing for, uh, for supports. Um, and I, w I am a little concerned that, uh, you know, even though you're a fair amount of uh, distance uh, laterally from the brook, uh, the, uh, the floodplain, 98-foot floodplain line does uh, extend under the proposed uh, structure. Mm. Uh, had you given any thought to uh, uh, perhaps uh, compensating for the piers? Well, like I said, when I calculated how much of the actual flood storage area would be taken up by the piers, or I should say the volume rather than the area, um, it was less than one cubic foot. So the loss of flood storage is essentially non-existent. Um, and that, that's the whole reason we're putting it on piers to begin with, is to not put a, um, like a foundation wall and take up all that um, flood storage area. Okay. Um. The uh, okay. The uh, the plans uh, speak of <coughs> uh, loaming, seeding, and stabilizing <coughs> disturbed areas. Excuse me. Um, I'm wondering, uh, was is that a proposal to perhaps? Uh, regrade or stockpile? No, there's, or what there's would not be a disturbed. There's not a thought to regrade anything. Um, um, that's kind of a generic note. You know, if anything gets kicked up out there, then they can. That's how they would restore that dirt area. Um, I know there is one tree that's going to be removed. That's where the deck's going to go now. So I would imagine some soil would get kicked up from that. Um, that that's how that area would be restored. So. And uh, you spoke of uh, erosion control. Where would that be located? So the erosion to control is located, I don't know if you can see it from there, but there's kind of a black line with some X's. That would be essentially the limit of work right there. Okay, and so that's, along um, the chain link fence? Yeah, so uh, yeah, along the chain link fence, and in the back here as well. Uh, that w that's the yard area right now existing. Okay. Uh, does anyone from the commission have questions about this project? I'd like to open it up to the public if we have uh, any comments here. I have one question. Go ahead. Um, what, th it's noted on the plan that it's an existing gravel driveway. Uh, will it remain gravel underneath the addition in the deck? I believe so. Let me uh, let me ask the owner. Is the driveway going to stay gravel? Yes, it will stay gravel. It's not going to be paved. And there's, and like you said, there's no intent of regrading that area. The grade nope. will nope. remain nope. the same. There's no, there's no thought to change the grades or anything. It's just, just an addition to the house and construction of the deck and removal of one tree to facilitate that. Is the... No under area of the addition intended for parking at all or no um and the reason is kind of actually from a zoning point um if that was used it would essentially be considered a carport um which would almost be considered a garage from a setback point of view and then you'd have a setback issue um so the thought right now is to use it probably for storage um of outdoor tools and equipment and things like that thank you so by storage, we wouldn't be enclosing for security purposes that area? No, I don't think so. Would you be enclosing the now? No. So it would be open, open to the air. There's no further questions at the moment from the commission. I'd ask if there's anyone from the public, either here or online, that would like to comment on this particular proposal. Uh, 
Uh, hearing none, I, I guess uh, my uh, major concern would be the uh, perhaps a graphic of the, the location and the uh, size of the supports mm -hmm. be sent in and included with the proposal. And uh, Do we I would like to. Uh, they're typically six to eight inches. I think it just depends on the the, the weight of the structure. I, I couldn't hear you. I, oh, I, this would be a calculation by your structural engineer. We're just asking to, to have that submitted. We, we have um, no information on supports on that plan. Mm -hmm. I will say I did look at the calculation of the floodplain um, storage, a six inch um, support versus an eight inch support. And as far as the difference in the cubic footage of floodplain loss, it's, it's like half a cubic foot to three quarters of a cubic foot. It, it's not a significant difference from a quantitative point of view. Um, I'd also like to uh, stipulate on our order, should we issue one, that uh, uh, there would be no stockpiling of materials uh, within a 50 foot of the brook. I don't think we'd have an issue with that. And uh, if you should happen to be including a, a new uh, graphic plan uh, with the uh, things on it that you put the erosion control proposal on there as well. You don't, I'm not saying you have to do that because we've, we've heard you say what, what it is, but. Uh, I mean, we do have a detail of the erosion control on the plan. I don't know if that's I, what you're looking you, for. You didn't say where it was going to be placed. Oh, no, it, it is. So there's, there's a black line right here with the X's. It's on there. I, th I think it's labeled. Hopefully it's labeled. Oh, okay. I thought that was the chain link fence. No, there's a fence right nearby it that's okay. kind of an existing line that circles. Um, but that thick black line is intended to be the erosion control. Okay, so. good. Um, so uh, if there's no more discussion or concerns, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you. Seconded? I'll second. Seconded by uh, Kevin. Um, no further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Uh, next, we need to decide if we're issuing an order of conditions on this proposal. Do we have a uh, motion? I'll make a motion to uh, give a standard or city of Lowell standard order of conditions with the uh, caveat that no stockpiling within 50 feet of the brook will occur of uh, construction materials. That's fine. Okay, motion made. Uh, is there a second? Can we also include um, a detail to be provided of the, the size of the supports mm -hmm. and I, with it? Uh, calculation of the net loss in storage sure yeah we can do that that'd be great uh, was that a second that's a second okay motion made and seconded and the further discussion was that the in, you include a detail of the supports uh, is there any further discussion all those in favor aye 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 aye, aye. any opposed uh, motion passes and the order will be issued uh, Thank you for coming in and presenting, and uh, the staff will, will be sending that out to you shortly. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we have a notice of intent. Uh, presented by Ken Lanya, Cornerstone Land Associates. The project location is 157 Bill Ricca Street. 
Uh, do we have a DEP file number on this? 206. 206-0813. Thank you. Okay, this is uh, 157 Gilberka Street. This is a notice to uh, construct two additional housing units on the lot. They're within 100 feet of a bordering vegetated wetland. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair. Members of the Commission, Kenneth Laney of Cornerstone Land Associates representing the applicants this evening. Uh, as you stated, we are before you tonight for a notice of intent application for the actually is just a construction of one additional unit in the buffer zone. The second unit associated with the project would be outside of the buffer zone, uh, but still is obviously part of the project. Uh, the parcel itself uh, sits along Bill Ricker Street. Uh, the bordering vegetated wetlands associated with the filing are actually across the road, um, and they are part of a system that reaches from Bill Ricker Street out to the Concord River which is located at the very rear of the parcel. As you can see on the plan, I added a 100-foot inner riparian zone and a 200-foot outer riparian zone, just to let the commission know that we are well outside the 200-foot uh, zone for the Concord River uh, with all of the construction with this particular project. Uh, we did receive some comments, and as a result of the comments, we provided an updated plan with a revision showing the erosion controls uh, as outlined on the plan, we provided that coming around from the front of the house, wrapping around the southern side of the property, and then coming back across to the northern side of the property at the rear prior to the 200-foot riparian zone. Uh, we did have an opportunity to speak with the stormwater team. Uh, we did provide a catch basin for the parking area for the dwellings, as well as a storm water uh, system to remove pollution and total suspended solids and allow infiltration uh, back into the groundwater. Uh, there's a uh, small amount of paving that would need to be added. Uh, two existing driveways are already uh, on both sides of the dwelling. And uh, we believe that the steps taken in the application with the erosion control uh, would allow the commission to issue an order uh, this evening for the particular project. I'd be glad to answer any questions at this time. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, you have the flood elevation listed at 104.2 on the parcel, is that correct? That is correct, Madam Chair. And you can see um, that's uh, with the dark line identified with the word FEMA on it. That wraps around um, from the Bill Ricker Street portion of the project on the neighboring southern lot and then comes back across the rear of the parcel near the 100-foot riparian zone. Okay, so uh, one of my concerns or questions is about the 105 contour. Mm -hmm. You show a proposed 105 contour. That is that, correct. Uh, presumably would mean that you're, you're filling some to bring up the 104 because this, this area is between the existing 105 contour and the 104 contour. The filling we're doing is all above the 104.2, so there's no filling below the 100-year floodplain. The 100-year floodplain barely touches the particular property on the parcel. I don't know if you can see that, Madam Chair. Just the front very corner of the parcel gets touched by the 100-foot floodplain. So even though you're extending the 105 contour towards the wetland, you're saying that that doesn't include any fill? That is 100% correct. I think it does include fill, but it doesn't include fill above or below 104.2. Correct. So there is some modification to the driveway in order for the drainage to work because the stormwater team wanted us to do as much collection of the impervious area as possible. But at no point does the 100-year floodplain come into the developable area. That, that's, that's pretty fine. <laughs> that's pretty fine. Uh spread of, of material there within a couple inches. Uh, that is correct, Madam Chair. But anything to um, satisfy the stormwater team. My next question, I think what I was wondering about is if you'd done test pits uh, to find out what the soils are like in that area. Uh, there was test pit provided. Uh, that was done on March 13th of 2019. 
by Norse Environmental. Uh, the soil types um, for the first 34 inches on site was uh, a fill type sand and from uh, 34 to 101 inches, which is just over um, 8 feet, it was medium fine sand with an estimated seasonal high water table of 97.8. So can we assume that that's uh, fairly uh, natural uh, layers of soil rather than fill? Uh, the, the top portion for the 34 inches is a fill type material, so I don't believe that that's virgin, but below 34 to 101 was the parent material, uh, which is that medium fine sand. Okay. I, I was just concerned because of the history on that street. Both sides of that lot have had problems with, uh, with contamination. With, yeah, no, I do believe I, uh, I am familiar with that. And on this particular lot, the reason we did the test pit was to ensure that there wasn't going to be an issue with that. Mm -hmm. um. And I did provide that test hold data, Madam Chair, up in the top left corner of the plan. So uh, you are doing some new paving, or is it all repaving? Uh, in the rear of the existing single family house, ma'am, we are adding the additional parking spaces. There's four parking spaces, so it's about 40 feet by 20 feet of additional pavement in the rear. And are you redoing the paving that exists now? Uh, we are going to potentially add additional pavement on top of it just to meet the grades as proposed, but there's no anticipation of grinding the paving that exists. Other than installation of the water line? That is correct. Yeah, wherever the excavations happen, obviously, you know, installation of, because the installation of the infiltration basins is actually under existing mm -hmm. pavement. So there will be obviously some utilities brought in, the utilities installed, those areas will be patched and a new paved area would be placed on top of whatever's existing and the newly installed utilities. Uh, and again, a majority of the paving that we're doing for the rear portion of the parcel is actually outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. Uh, questions from the commission? I don't, I, at the, the bottom left hand corner of the property, you see the 104 contour for a short time and then it disappears. Is that to say that there's nothing, there, there's nowhere that the 104 hits? Uh, well, so if you look on the plan, the 104 starts in Bill Ricker Street. It comes across Bill Ricker Street to the first driveway entrance. It curves back along and then pretty much runs along the FEMA line. Um, it end, you know, I ended the contour based off of the grading uh, right when it got inside that easement area where the power lines are. Can you see that? I can't really see it again. As soon as it hits the... Uh the overhead wire line, the first overhead wire line. Yep, and, and that's where I ended it. So okay. we showed the 104.2 contour for the FEMA line. I didn't continue to show the 104 behind that because it oh. well, it's well off the property. FEMA line, got it, okay. Because um, that FEMA line is 104.2. Got it, thank right. you. Yep. Do we have um, any uh, stormwater calcs for the expansion of the, the asphalt area so I mean I, I didn't provide calcs to the Commission but we are required to uh, submit a stormwater permit for the stormwater team prior to construction after obtaining the order conditions um, they didn't require um, their typical half inch calculations in this particular site because it's so close to the river and it doesn't enter into any of the city of Lowell stormwater drainage systems um, so they did not require it. How about HydroCAD? I did not do it. Okay. It wasn't required. It's typically not needed on a small site like this. Usually stormwater handbook policy doesn't kick in until four units or more. Anyone else from the commission? Is there anyone online or in the building here that would like to ask a question or make a comment about this particular proposal? Okay. 
Hearing none, uh, are we ready to close the public hearing? I will make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second it. Oh, it's Weston, by the way. Okay, motion made, seconded by. I think that was Weston. Uh, it was me talking, but Perry seconded it. Okay. Weston motion and then Perry seconded. Oh, okay. I haven't seen Weston yet tonight. Hello, Weston. Hey. <laughs> Did it pop up on your little screen or what? Maybe not. Okay, so the motion's been made and seconded to close. Oh, there he is. <laughs> uh, <t> Still <laughs> at the dam. That's what it looks like tonight. Yes, that's right. Uh, Getting green okay. again. All those in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Uh, Aye. The hearing is now closed. Uh, we now. Uh, decide whether to issue an order of conditions on this particular project. I'll make a motion to uh, offer a City of Lowell standard order of conditions. A uh, motion made to offer standard Lowell order of conditions. Do you I'll have second, a second that motion. Seconded by Kevin, thank you. Uh, further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion passes. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. a great evening. Next, we have a request for determination of applicability that has been on the agenda before. Uh, the proponent is Suleen Catano of 509 Wentworth Avenue. This is a request to uh, construct a three season porch within the 100 year floodplain. Is there anyone here uh, for this particular proposal, here or online? Uh, I feel we do need to do something about this uh, since it's been on our agenda for probably six months. So I'm going to propose that we uh, send her a uh, determination uh, which we've used a couple times before and that would be a, a positive determination rather than a negative and uh, let me just find my papers um, that's a negative three Just my papers aren't in order Okay, I believe this would be a uh, just give me a moment here. Uh, what do you what do you think, Brad? Which one did we use before? Is it this one? So this is all mentioned in another state chat, which I don't think we want to do at this point. So hasn't someone come before, or no one's ever been here for this? We've product? had it. We've brought it up four times. Yeah, no, someone was been here, and we sent them back to provide more information. And they never came back. And they've never come back. Okay. So I'm thinking we need to respond. Um, okay, so I think it's a positive determination number five uh, that we want to, and this would be, uh, this would be, have a uh, addition to it that uh, we would need to uh, get the approval of the Lowell Conservation Commission uh, before uh, any work commenced. Can we assign ourselves as the um, the board of approval? Uh, I think that we could all we could also assign it as three and 
say, I mean, a notice of intent is basically a request for more information, which is what we've done. Um, yeah, but we, we can't, we haven't decided, we haven't had enough information to say that they need to file a notice of intent. And we've That's contacted what, them mm -hmm. multiple times. I don't know, is, have we had any contact with, with this particular applicant? Have we had any contact with this particular applicant? Um, I've been trying to reach out to them. I reminded them today that this meeting was tonight and I didn't get a response back. So it's been really tough. It, it seems like perhaps they put this on the back burner. I just want to respond in, <clears throat> in some way to them. I guess, it, you know, I don't have any problem with, with number five. I, I question that that's really what we're how we're supposed to use that. I feel like it's supposed to go to another board, but. I mean, it does, it does, al it does alter the area. And we can request a notice, a notice of intent for anything we want, really. Oh, we, you know what? We had asked for several, we had asked for several pieces of information when this last came up. About When, when this last came up, we had asked for several pieces of information that right. I don't believe we ever received. Right. That's why I think perhaps they've changed their plans as far as building. We're, we're, we're looking to assign a positive determination to it just to take it off the books. Mm -hmm. And we're just wondering about how to actually go about doing that. Uh, There's a few right. options for those determinations. Right. Right. What, do you, what do you get? Well, this is, it doesn't have a number, but... Uh, Uh, we, use, we use this particular one, Fran, I know you're not at every meeting, but we use this particular one before. Do you have any record of the wording for that? To I have never you weren't overseen here. a project for this, no. Okay, no, so I think on anything. number five, we would, we would put a sentence in there saying that uh, the Lowell Conservation Commission has determined this uh, project applicable to the Wetlands Protection Act and the Wetlands Ordinance, and therefore no work shall occur until, uh, until plans are approved by the commission. Okay, sounds good. That's so I, right. yeah, I think that's fine. I can make that motion. Um, we're going to um, offer a positive determination number five to uh, request approval from the Conservation Commission of drawings revised as previously discussed. Yeah, well, I was looking for something more general that we could use, like this or that. The way she said it. <laughs> Instead of tailoring it to the personal. Okay, so uh, for anyone who's now totally confused, what we've done is we're going to be sending a determination of applicability to this particular applicant at 509 Wentworth Avenue and basically saying that it is applicable to the Wetlands Protection Act and they will need to come back to us uh, for approval of any particular plans. We have incomplete plans and we haven't been able to get in touch with the applicant and I think after six months it's time to respond in some way or another. So that's what we're doing on that particular one. Uh, do we want to take, was that a motion? Yes. Okay, that was a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Perry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so that will go out. Thank you. Next, we have a request for determination of applicability at 265 Wentworth Avenue. And this is a uh, replacement of an existing deck within 100 feet of a wetland. Is there someone here or online for 265 Wentworth Avenue? Yep, hi, my name's Lily, I'm online. I'm, um, my husband submitted the, the application. Okay, welcome. Uh, Thank you. So I did have a couple of questions, I think. Um, okay, uh, you are a fair uh, distance from uh, from the wetland over 70 feet we do 
generally frown upon work within the 50-foot buffer, uh, but you are outside of that. Uh, uh, I yep. was just concerned that there be no uh, storage or disposal of materials within that 50-foot buffer. Uh, I think you yep. can do your project without having to store things down in that area. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We've got um, room on both sides of, of the house as well. Um, so I think that wouldn't be an issue. We've got a, we've got plenty of space beyond the 50 foot buffer. Okay, there are other concerns from the commission. I would yeah. say being, being this close to the wetlands that, you know, uh, we're assuming that you're going to be replacing the concrete footings for the, the, the deck that you uh, restabilize the soil as quickly as possible. Um, okay, but I don't need to set any restrictions on that. Just you know, the goal is to make sure that the soil doesn't make its way to the wetlands. Do we okay. feel a need for erosion control? I do not. Erosion control. No. Okay. Uh, so do we have a do we have a motion then about this particular uh, request? I'll make a motion to grant this project a negative three determination. Okay, motion for a negative three. That's, I'll that's a good it. thing if you're listening. Uh, so <laughs> by Kevin. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, well, uh, good luck with your project. Uh, you'll get some paperwork shortly from the, from the city, and, right. and uh, that means that we've approved what you're proposing. Excellent. Thank, thank you all very much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, next we have another request for determination of applicability from Savun Kio, 45 Hollis Street. Uh, this is a proposal for a, a little bit of an enlarged deck. Uh, and the, uh, what, uh, the floodplain line uh, runs through the center of the property, I believe, at elevation 126. Good evening. Welcome. Hi. How's it going? Um, okay. I'm definitely not, like, technical savvy, you know, like everybody here or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, I pretty much just want to build a, a wraparound deck uh, around my property okay. with a two-family. So um, will, will you be keeping the deck that's on there now and just expanding it, or are you replacing the whole thing? Uh, there's no deck currently there. So there's no deck now? No. No. So it will extend along the entire rear of the house when you're done, is that correct? Say that one more time. It'll go completely across the back of the house when you're done? Uh, four feet out, yeah. Four feet, four feet from the house? Yes, I, I have a, a drawing. I'm not I, from a contractor. I don't... Is that the same drawing that you no, sent into us? No, a different one. Detailed, yeah. Can we one? take a look. You, you want me to bring it up, or? Yeah. Okay. Oh wow. Okay, these are the stairs. Okay. Look here. Stairs, deck, deck. So how uh, how wide is is this part right here? So this this is six feet here. All right. Okay. And I this see is, it's six this feet. This is fourteen feet here. So you have an eight foot house bump out. Uh, okay. You want to show this to these guys? He does. <laughs> okay, that yeah, this one's much okay. better than the first one. Yeah. 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 
So what kind of supports are you going to have holding that up, and how high is it off the ground? Four feet off the ground? It, uh, it might be a good idea to return to the podium for the questions. Be heard at these mics are phenomenal. They are awesome. <laughs> um, yes, it will be at least four feet off the ground. Um, the support, I'm not. And, and what kind of supports are you planning? Uh, I'm not too sh entirely sure what he wanted on the support, but uh, but there like will be some wood or cement or. The, there'll be the cement footings. Cement with, footings. Yes, yeah. with the. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, with the, Yeah. There'll be the cement footings. Yes. Okay, and how? How big are they going to be? How wide? How? Of the wood. The 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 poles that. The poles. Hold this up. Uh, I think you need a minimum six by six in this case. I would. I think that's code, but that's really for the, the builder, the building department to approve. But he's out, he's extending now out across the 126 foot elevation, I think. Um, I originally thought that the house, that this was the deck, and that he was just going this way, but now he's coming out another six feet. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I don't, I don't see it on here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not oh, I see. too sure on that. I see what you, what you mean. Yeah. Okay, you, you do have uh, you do have a wetland resource in the back half of your yard, and that's what I'm trying to think about whether your deck is going to extend into that uh, flood area. Yeah. I think it will just a little bit. Now, this is part of his house, I think. He thought that yeah. was the deck and that he was just coming yeah. this way. But now he's coming he's out coming another out. Yeah, yeah. another six feet if we're bringing into that that area. Because these areas are just small that we normally have to do the Yeah. Who's to say? said that on one of the things I read. So the, 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 the city's comments do show that there's a four foot drop in elevation between the work site and the, and the wetlands. Um, yeah. I don't know where they're taking their, ed, you know, what, the, what they're calling the edge of the work site exactly, but. I think it's fairly, I think the lot, I was looking at the GIS, I think the lot is fairly flat and then it drops much further to the rear. Right in the back here? It just drops right into the wetland? I think, I think the, the drop is by the, by the rear line. But we don't know the elevation of, I mean, we don't, we don't know where the elevation is really on the ground other than this, this, this map that he's got up right there, right? He didn't, he didn't do elevation. I, no. I, ha I have an elevation certificate. Would, would you like to see it? Um, you have an elevation map? Certificate. An elevation certificate. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Was that in our package? Was that in our package? No. But we're probably going to want copies of what you're showing us tonight. Yeah. That'd be uh, great. Yeah, come on up. What what do you mean? In, in, it, like it, he was like, this is, I don't know how much the narrative holds, but he said if I could just put this, if, if they're this would only be in the fourth column. Because literally my neighbor is not in the fourth column. So Are you familiar with this? Yes. Closer. They're, they're out. 
So, yeah, please. Um, from the elevation of that first floor that you would come out onto your deck. Yeah. How high? How high are those posts? Like, how? how what's the d elevation from the ground out, all the way out at the edge of the deck? You know, fourteen feet or six feet, depending on uh, where we're talking about, away from your house. Yeah. How far off the ground? How high off the ground are you? I would say at least four feet. Right around four feet. Yeah, I would say so. He's he's right at the flood zone, there. Yeah. So any 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 footing or post that's protruding out of there, we're really only talking that, like he said, that inch. That's what he was talking about. So. You know, my, my recommendation would be to just make sure that the, because you're going to install a, a, a concrete footing, yep. right, 12 inches at least, yep. in the ground. And then you're going to set a 4x4 four four or a 6x6 six six wooden post on top of that to go up to the deck. Correct. Um, keep the top of the concrete only slightly above the existing grass that's down there now. Okay. Um, and then switch to wood right away. Instead of taking that concrete up out of the ground, because that decreases any loss in the in the flood zone. It's basically the same thing that we were talking about with um, Mr. Lania. Yeah. Right. Steve, did you want to see this document? We're t I, it seems like we're talking about a de minimis amount of, of flood zone storage, yeah. you know, addition to flood zone storage. Yeah. Um, what, do we, what do we feel about erosion control on the lot? I would support erosion control on this project. Okay. Uh, erosion control is a silt fence or uh, some kind of barrier that this, uh, you know, specific ones that will prevent any loose soil from being washed down into the wetland. So on most projects of, of any type that's close to the wetland, we require you to, it's like putting up a temporary fence. Okay. Uh, sometimes it's a round uh, bit of uh, just straw that that's, looks like a snake that will catch any, any loose soil. Sometimes it's a black fence. You've probably seen them on projects that's very finely woven that will catch soil as well. Okay. So uh, that's that's something that probably is needed across, uh, you know, across the middle of your backyard until you're finished with the project. Okay. If you tell your builder that you need erosion control. be able to install something for you okay awesome uh, you can you can have this back but if we could have for our file a copy of uh, the map that you showed us so the diagram and a copy of this um, I don't want to take as original I know we're supposed to collect anything that's shown at the meeting but um, Okay, so uh, I think we have an understanding of the project now. Is there anyone uh, here that would like to make a comment on this particular project here or online? Okay, uh, it's, not a it's not an official notice of intent, so it's not a public hearing, but uh, I would entertain a motion concerning this particular proposal. I'll make a motion to grant this project a negative three designation with the condition that they have uh, erosion, erosion control use on the project. Second. Motion made and seconded to uh, issue a negative three. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so negative three means we're concerned about the wetland, but we don't think your project will 
permanently impact it in any way. So uh, we're giving you the go ahead to, to do that. Um, you'll be getting some paperwork from City Hall. Okay. And after you receive your paperwork, you can begin. And at the same time, if you get those, a copy of those documents. I, I have an extra action. Or your file. Yep. Thank that was you. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Moving along, we have some new business. The next is a determination of a request for determination of applicability uh, sent to us by Jose Ribeiro, project location 534 Wentworth Avenue. Uh, this is a, a proposal to finish the basement of the home at that address uh, and repave and expand a driveway within the 100-year floodplain. Is there someone here for 534 Wentworth Avenue? Yes, Welcome. Uh, good evening. I represent Sir Lane Correa, but is the owner of the house. And yeah, the reason for this project is uh, special because of the driveway is kind of pitching down to the basement. And we are located on a low uh, uh, section of the, the street and the water runs from the street and goes in through the basement. So she wants to finish up the basement. Okay, so uh, I understood the, the documentation to say that you weren't changing the, uh, the way the water runs off or the elevations. Is, is that not the case? Well, as a, uh, the, the driveway is pitching down into the basement, like a... Uh, right. Yeah. Do you and the have water, it's because it's the low spot. Right. The water run, when there's a lot of rain, it's, uh, the water comes from the street into the basement. Okay. So that's why we, we, we want to switch the pitch and add the uh, spot parking. Do you have any kind of a drainage system in that driveway, like a grate where water can run down through or... We have on the basement, yes. And, and does in the that- the basement, we have all the way around. And does and that we not- pump, When the water coming in, we pump it out to the uh, dry well on the outside. Okay, so you have a system now where water that runs in, underground into some kind of collection- Exactly, yes. Goes to a dry, a dry well. To a dry well on the outside, yes, on the so back. So you're the... saying that this is not adequate? No, we're not gonna add anything. Just finishing up, adding a, like a two side doors, one to the back, one to the uh, side, and close the, the foundation to avoid the water goes in through again. Okay, I, I wasn't really clear. I didn't see too much about this particular topic on your plan. Uh, I, I, I mean, I saw about the repaving and normally if you're in a, a flood area, uh, it looks like you might be entirely in the flood plain at that particular location if the flood plain elevation is 126. Uh, and normally for, uh, for repaving in that type of a situation, as long as you take out the old pavement and put in the new at the same elevation, we have been allowing that. But when you're talking about uh, filling, then you have to think about how you- Yeah, if you, it's in case if you re, uh, just repaving, it's no reason for that because we're not gonna avoid it, the water goes in through the basement. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get, catch that last. Yeah, to repaving, it's not the case because if you repaving doesn't gonna change, the water comes from the street and go in through the basement. <clears throat> hey, That's why you... we wanna like a, a Close the, the foundation on the garage door because it used to be a garage inside. It is a garage inside. So we want to close that up and fill on the outside and switch the pitch. Just uh, switch the pitch into the street, over to the street. Okay, I'm not sure you're supposed to put water into the street. Are there storm drains in that street? Any driveway, it runs the water to the street. 
maybe what we could do is to put a like, like a, a, a grade on, a, on the front of the driveway and let them run into the soil. Is that something that you need to clear out to make it function better, or is it just totally inadequate? Yeah, I think it, it, it's because she wants to finish it up the basement, and she needs to avoid it any uh, way the water goes in. Hey, have you had an engineer look at this project? Yes, uh, we have all the drawings. So I'll, I'll let somebody else. Uh... I, I think that um, we need to define exactly where the floodplain is in this case because it seems like if you are in, if fully in the floodplain, you're not allowed to just fill that area without taking it from somewhere else. So I don't think that it's really an option to just fill up your driveway in order to change the pitch. Um, I, we, we would really need to see that it, that area either isn't in the, storm, in, the, in the floodplain or that the engineer has uh, compensated for that loss of storage by creating additional storage somewhere else on the site. Yeah, on, on that case, we might can have the engineering do whatever is needed to be done. But uh, at this point, we I don't know, as I see it, the comments of the engineering here. Yeah. There was, you know, the three items here. Yeah. We, we, I, I, I was going to have the engineering uh, doing something on this, but he was too busy. The one did the plans, and he couldn't do on time for this meeting. I, I, I also don't, I don't think that the plans that we have that were submitted really express a change in the, the pitch of the driveway that well because the contours aren't on there. It's hard for us to even see that. It looked like, you know, that's why she started with the asking about are we just repaving it at its existing Yes, grade? it's You're, not just the case. It has yeah. to be refilled. It looked like because that to that me the too. foundation going to be uh, built on the garage door yeah. And then we're going to uh, fill and, and build a uh, new driveway. There's definitely more information. I would start by addressing the, com the engineering comments yes. with your engineer and, and resubmitting. Um, as, as presented, I, I certainly don't have enough information to make a decision. Okay. Here. That's the only issue on a driveway? Um, Adding that information will allow us to assess whether or not we have any other concerns. Okay. Right now, it's, there's not enough information for me to even yes, understand it properly. I agree with you, yes. Okay. So in that case, can we, can we have another meeting? And then by then, I'll have all the... If you'd like a continuance, uh, do you have a sense of, of the information we need? I think uh, we should try to... Uh, it's uh, it's the third engineering comment, basically. Yeah, it's in the it's in the city's com the city's engineering comments. I think it's pretty clear there. Yeah, you have a copy of that. He does. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, you know, there's no indication of of how much you'd need to fill. Yes. Or what the elevation of that area is now. Yes. And. Once we knew the elevation, we could have a better sense of is that I agree, plane? yes. Is that the flood? I plane? should have by this time, I'm sorry, but uh, you know, uh, the, the, the engineer who did this plan was too busy well, and he couldn't do on time. Well, it's, you know, I, it, it's pretty tough to em employ anybody like that. <laughs> I know. Get them to do work on time. Yeah. Everybody's pretty busy. Yes. So if you would like to, uh, how much time would, do you think your engineer would need to look at that and give okay. us a little more information? All right. We have, a, we have a meeting on May 11th. We have a meeting on May 25th. Um, 525th? 525, yes. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's okay. good enough. Yeah, it's enough time. Okay, so uh, we have a motion to uh, continue this particular project to May 25th that the uh, request of the applicant before we proceed I would just say to the engineer that we're going to require um, not only a total fill volume yes but in each one foot contour okay 
Uh, we need to know how much is filled in, in the 100, the 101 contour, the 102 contour, that, those sections. And, um, because that also needs to be cut from somewhere else on the site okay. in those elevations. Yes. The same amount in the 100, the same amount in the 101 needs to be taken out somewhere else. Yeah. And that should be shown on a chart. Can you email me all this uh, the requirement? How uh, how I gonna explain that to him? That would that will come from the the conservation agent. Oh, okay. Uh, so, all right. Selena. Yes. Okay. I appreciate it. Um, I'll make a motion to continue this to the May twenty fifth. Okay. Meeting. Motion made to continue. Seconded by. I'll second. Seconded by Steve. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Uh, thank you for coming in, and, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, give a call to our conservation agents. Okay. And uh, they can uh, help you out in some way, hopefully. All right. Thank uh, you. And we'll see you back on the 25th. Thank okay. you. I'll see you then. Okay. Next, we have uh, another request for determination of applicability from Christopher Bethel, 47 Joffrey Street. This is a uh, proposal to repave an existing driveway and walkway in the 100-year floodplain within 100 feet of the wetland, which I believe is part of Black Brook. Correct. Uh, so uh, this particular proposal, uh, we were just talking about repaving a minute ago. I don't know if you were listening. I didn't Normally, no, in an no area, elevation change. No in an area like this, we would want to keep the elevation exactly. the same, which usually means you'd be removing uh, pavement. Is that what you were? Correct. We're going to take out the existing mix and then Re removing the pavement are. off the site and um, be off, off the site, load it out, and, and then the repaving would need to be at the same elevation as correct. the old was. Oh, correct. That's all going to be. It's going to match up to the yard, all the grass, the street, the curb, the back, you know, the driveway coming in with the walkways. Everything will be exact. It's all around three corners of the house. It's all landscaped. It'll all be okay. All so um, you're not expanding the driveway at this Negative. point. You're nope, just exactly repaving. The same. Repaving. Yeah. So uh, we we have uh, permitted this in the past and in similar similar areas. Um, are there any further comments or questions from the commission? I'll make a motion to grant a negative three determination. A uh, motion for negative three, uh, seconded by I'll second that. Evan. Uh, further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so a negative three means we, we think it's uh, within our jurisdiction, but we don't think that your project will affect, uh, affect the resource area. Uh, were you planning uh, any kind of erosion control? Or I don't use the mulch sock right on the corner. It's just a hot area. It's, it's real tight. There's you know, everyone's a firm, house. It's one area. There. I yeah. could put a hay bale on the edge. Of the okay, driveway, so went out to the, the old pavement will go from from the ground into the truck right into and truck. go away. Correct. Right. It okay. won't be it won't be stockpiled. It's going to be okay. loaded right out. All right. Uh, okay, so we've granted you permission to do that project, and you'll be getting some paperwork from the city. And thank you for coming in and waiting till the last no, item. Fine. Thank you very much. He knew Have all of our questions. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, uh, we have other business. Uh, DPD is looking to form a master plan steering committee that will help oversee the process and ensure public participation uh, as a key element of the master plan. Um, 20 to 30 community members. And let's see, they're going to include a representative from each of the boards and, and committees. So, um, this is a, I believe, how long will this process last? A couple of years? Yes. We're anticipating a couple of years. It's a quarterly commitment, so we're anticipating that the steering committee will meet 
about four times per year. So not a huge commitment time-wise. No. I'd, uh, I'd be interested in, in taking this on. Okay. Uh, Put my name interested. out there. Anybody else interested? I have, some, I have some interest as well, but it's nice to have a volunteer. Um, I wish I could spend another night in City Hall, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do we have, uh, what do we do, vote? Uh, okay, Perry has volunteered, and uh, could we have, let's see, how would we do that? Uh, let's have somebody nominate Perry. Uh, I'll nominate Perry for the Mass Plan Steering Committee. Okay. And I'll second. And, okay, so Perry's been nominated. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Perry, good luck. All right. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. It's important stuff, so. Yeah. I was really hoping you'd volunteer for that. <laughs> you have enough on your plate already, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we got to keep Perry busy. Yeah. Okay, we have now minutes of uh, the meetings of March 23rd and poor November 10th, waiting around <laughs> still to be approved. Uh, our minute man, Bill Lovely, has uh, approved both of these minutes as far as he's concerned. Do we have a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion to approve, seconded by. I'll second it. Seconded by Perry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, Fran didn't think we were going to get through this agenda tonight, did you, Fran? I was a little nervous. <laughs> but you're very <laughs> here, here we are with nothing left to do, and we've reached the end of the agenda. You did great. <laughs> we're very impressed over here. <laughs> So do we have a motion to adjourn? Unless, is there other business first before we adjourn? Is there anything else? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Everyone wants to stay longer. Make that motion. <laughs> I'll second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night and thank you for watching. Bye guys. Hi, Weston. See you, Weston. Hi, Weston. Night. Yeah, that's awesome. I know. What? Yeah, buddy. Nice work. Yeah, I thought that was going to take forever.